After months of designing, testing and polishing, Disparity was finally released on Game Banana and I was sat there at my PC, awaiting the first feedback. What now? Well, there's not much you can do in that situation. Since this was released for a competition, I was unable to make any changes to the map. I made sure that there were the prettiest screenshots available on display and that the description was short and concise. Time would take care of the rest. The worst thing that could happen is if somebody posts a comment saying that the map doesn't work or that there are missing textures. These things would immediately take my map out of the competition, unless, of course, the comment was a troll. D Roma, a very attractive map, was discovered to have no buy zones. This could have been because the map was only designed to look pretty and wasn't playtested before, or more likely, the buy zones were accidentally disabled in the final compile of the map. A simple mistake, but one that couldn't be picked up if made last minute. It's sad to see such a promising entry that's no doubt had months of love put into it get shot down for a problem that takes 5 seconds to fix. Disparity wasn't always called that. In fact, until the day of release, Disparity was actually called a map. This meant that when you opened up the console and typed map, this map would pop up at the top of the list, saving me minutes of my life. Every one of my maps, apart from Karenia, had their name chosen about a day before the map's release. A name, to me, isn't important. It's what it ends up being that means something, and it's that which gives the name meaning. And then suddenly, I got my first rating. 8 out of 10, and a comment saying that one of the building structures was odd, but otherwise it's nice. This can be taken two ways. It could be taken as constructive criticism and a decent rating, but I took it kind of badly. 8 out of 10 is not a good rating. As Game Banana says, it means that this map is intermediate. 9s and 10s are good ratings, and are the ones that most entries into the competition were rewarded, as were my previous maps. It also hurt that it was from a moderator of Game Banana, somebody who I thought should have remained impartial since it was a Game Banana contest. And finally, it was posted just minutes after I submitted my map. He clearly hadn't played it, and was merely criticising it based on one of the screenshots. Sadly, I felt this rating would determine future ratings. It now sits on that site with a rating of 8.61, far below most other maps, and I can't help but blame it on that first careless post that managed to shoot down months of work. To deduct 20% off of the score because he wanted to show off about his knowledge of construction hurts, especially when I doubt he would have criticised a map with simpler graphics and less detail in this regard. From the games I used to make, I learned that making something more complicated simply gives people more chances of finding faults. Andre was the one person who posted a decent bit of feedback, and I thank him greatly for doing this. It's hard to justify getting so angry and frustrated over such a small thing. Onlookers will clearly say you're overreacting, but they're not the ones to have dedicated months of work to it. Another post said that the map was too claustrophobic and wasn't a standout map. A couple of other people were positive. But, of course, this wasn't the end. It was only Game Banana, and I kept telling myself that I didn't make this map just for the competition. I used it as an incentive to get it done, but ultimately its fate would be decided on the Steam Workshop. I geared up for release 2, the one on the Steam Workshop. Whilst I had gotten it up to a decent level for the competition, I could really take my time and make the Workshop entry the ultimate one, with as many tweaks and changes as I wanted. Well, she was amazing. He hosted the map on a server and we were able to extensively test it. I'm happy to say that nothing major was found. I improved the detail, tweaked the lighting, and made small adjustments that polished the map, then when I felt it was ready to be released, I made a trailer for the map. I intended for this video to be short, entertaining and informative. I made passing comments about how the map was designed for competitive play, but it was almost a jokey video which was there to hold people's attention. I focused on things that people would notice straight away, like the ice texture. Nobody should download a map because of a texture, but they did. Disparity's success was partly because of a joke about how pretty the ice was. Vex's first, superficial suggestion to the map was now its unique selling point. With the workshop, it's all about appearance. There are thousands of maps being released and nobody has time to play them all. They'll likely judge whether your map is worth playing within seconds, so having attractive screenshots, an entertaining trailer, and an IP for them to play the map on all helps to sway them in your favour. I gave them no reason not to try the map, and it worked brilliantly. The year before this map, I made D Karenia for the 2013 contest. I made it to be a standard defuse map from the word go, and it did well in the Game Banana 2013 competition. It reached the final 10, and from there it was up to the public to vote for the best map. It had become a popularity contest rather than a mapping one, and most people posted the map on large forums, asking for votes. I didn't do this. Even with my YouTube channel, I simply sat there, thinking I'd be criticised if I exploited my position by begging for votes. Because of that, I came none out of 10. To make a popular map, you don't just have to be a good mapper. You also need to market it correctly, and with Disparity, I feel that I cracked it. I'd like to make something clear here. 
My map success was not just because of the size of my YouTube channel, which obviously does give me an advantage over other people. It definitely helped and I thank anybody who saw the trailer when it was released and booted up the game to play with myself and Welshy. What really helped was a Reddit post about it that was submitted by somebody else and reached number one on the Global Offensive page. I don't know why it did so well there compared with other maps, I suspect the video had something to do with it. If you look at the traffic from the trailer, you'll see just how much of it comes from external sources. The map continued to boom in popularity over the following days and the server remained active. For the first day it was full, and for several days after that there was always a battle raging. Well, she set up a second server with competitive settings for players to use, and between these two servers, hundreds of people got to play the map against other real people, including myself. To this day, Disparity sits in at number 12 on the top maps of all time list on the CSGO Workshop page, though I believe it missed the cutoff for the operation by several days. I live in hope that it will be included at some point in the future, as this would be the greatest honour a map could get. As it stands, I am very happy with how the map is done. It's done better than I expected on the workshop, which is the one place that really matters. I am pleased that the approach I took towards making this map worked and look forward to working on future projects, but I couldn't have done this alone. And that concludes the release of the map. I hope that you have enjoyed this series. It has taken me a long time to make, but I think this can cover the process of making a map better than any tutorial could. The series isn't over yet, I've still got to cover how the competition went and the additional changes to the map, in my opinion two of the most interesting topics and the ones that I probably learned the most from. But until next time, smell you later.